بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد سائل يسأل فيقول ما حكم الأضحية What is the ruling on performing the sacrifice for Eid al-Adha What's the ruling on al-Udhiya Hayakum Allah What is the ruling on al-Udhiya Al-Jawab Al-Zahiriya tuqalu bi'annaha wajibah والجمهور قالوا بأنها السنة ودلة القائلين بالوجوب حديث على كل أهل بيت أضحية ولحديث من وجد ساعة فلم يضحي فلا يقربن مصلانا ولقوله تعالى فصلي لربك وانهر والأمر للوجوب على تفسير من فسر العية بأن المراد بها فصل صلاة العيد وانحر الأضحية أو فصل صلاة العيد وانحر الأضحية ومن العلماء من فسرها بأن المراد فصل لربك لا للأصنام وانحر لربك ولا للأصنام ومن قال بالسنية جعل القرينة الصارفة للوجوب أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ضحى عنه وعن أمته ورأى الشوكاني أن من معه ساعة من المال فيجب عليه أن يضحي The answer says that there's one school of law one school of thought one group of scholars who say that the udhiyah is mandatory it has to be done and these ulama from them they're not the only ones لأنها رواية عن أحمد لم يذكره المفتي وكذلك جاءنا بحنيفة وآخرين from those علماء are the علماء who are called الظاهرية the literalists the ظاهريز the disciples and the students of Dawood ibn Ali al-Zahiri رحمه الله way before Ibn Hazm Ibn Hazm was not the founder of this school he was the main exponent of the school proprietor of the school pusher of the school but he was not the founder Rather, one can say the founder of the Zahiri school is the messenger of Allah. The one who told the people to do, to obey, and to listen. And to take that which is outward and apparent until there's something else. Until there's what? Something else. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us to فَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا He says, eat and drink. حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Until the white thread is plain from the black thread. And the companion, he took the threads and he placed them upon his pillow in his bed. And the Prophet ﷺ explained to him that that wasn't what was meant. The highlighting point is, is that the asal is the zahir al Is that which is apparent and outward until proven to be another meaning, metaphysical, little, etc. Al-Muhim, we're not here to discuss that right now. These ulama, the zahiri ulama, they hold the view that udhiyah is obligatory. It has to be done. It's not an option to be left off. And as far as the other schools, the Jumhur, the schools of the other traditional orthodox madhahib, they hold the view that the is recommended. And it doesn't have to be done, but it should be done. As far as the proofs and evidences, for those who say that it's wajib, it has to be done, then first and foremost is the hadith that states, upon each and every household is an udhiya. Upon each and every household is one animal. Also the hadith that says, those who are affluent and they don't offer the sacrifice, they shouldn't come near our musalla. Don't come near, don't approach us, don't sit in our musalla if you don't offer the animal and you have the ability to do so. And they also use Allah Azza statement, فَصَلِّي لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ Pray to your Lord and slaughter for your Lord. And they say, with regards to usul al-fiqh, the principle is that whenever there's a command, an amr, fi'al amr, then it proves that that act is mandatory. One har. Uh, that you have to do it. Uh, and this is based off of one of the interpretations of this verse. Those who interpret the verse to mean, offer salat al eid and slaughter the udhiyah. That's one tafsir of surah al-kawthar. Tayyip. And there are other ulama who say that was meant by pray to your Lord, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ يَعْنِي تَوْهِيد And don't pray to idols. 
and slaughter one har lahu yani la lil aslam don slaughter for idols tayyib as far as those who say that it's recommended and not obligatory then obviously they're in front of a wall now a wall of these dalils these adilla that clearly state that it's obligatory he says they say that it's only recommended and then a command in the quran and in the sunnah doesn't always necessarily mean that it's obligatory but it has to be a qarina there has to be a context clue there has to be something that takes it away from its default and the default is that the command shows that the thing is mandatory until proven otherwise as we've explained and they say that that qarina that context clue is the fact that the prophet sallallahu when he slaughtered he slaughtered for himself his household and for his ummah for the ummah of muhammad he did it on behalf of his followers meaning that his followers don't have to do it but if they want to do it then it's a good and recommended thing to do as far as al-shawkani rahimahullah the author of nail al-autar a lot of these fatawa come from the sharh of nail al-autar of the sheikh he says that the shawkani's view is that udhiyah is obligatory upon those who actually can afford it those who can afford it and what's meant by those who can afford it not those that can do it and get by but those who are huh satan who are wealthy because there's a difference because it's only obligatory if you have the money hajj is only obligatory for those who what who have the money but that's not what's meant here you can make a hajj you save up you squeeze a little bit you sacrifice a little bit it takes you some years to do it that's not the same as someone who's what wealthy and the $500 for an animal, $300 for an animal doesn't hurt him. It's no squeeze at all. I want to understand the difference. The hadith says, Man wajata sa'atan. Those who have the sa'a, the expansiveness of wealth. That's the ruling of any act of worship. You don't have to make hajj unless you have the, the money. You don't make zakat unless you have the what? That's not what's meant in the old here. What's meant here, that view, that third view, is that those who have the money in it, what? A little more. That's the difference between I've saved up $300 for Udhiyah, and between $300 is nothing at all. I can spend that, you know, on one thing, simply. Are you understand the difference here? Saying that Udhiyah is obligatory upon what? Wealthy people. And not upon people that aren't necessarily what? Wealthy. You can have money saved up and not be what? Wealthy. You've made hajj before and you're not necessarily wealthy. That's not the same as someone who's wealthy and he has extra. It doesn't harm him at all. There's no pinch. There's no scratch at all. Then he said that they, those people, they have to what? They have to make the old here, huh? So this is a very beneficial, clear, and concise summary of the issue. And this fatwa is given by Sheikh Al-Umrani, rahimahullah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.